You may be wondering why I'm beating this box like a bad habit. I recently purchased some custom colored handles and latches for the side of my pelican case, that way it matches my back plate and wing setup. Now I'm sure you're asking the same thing that Courtney was asking. Is it necessary to purchase custom aftermarket latches and handles for a pelican tough box? This is completely necessary? Uh, necessary? And the answer to that is no, it's not necessary. But is it necessary to purchase a tough box? It absolutely is. Church here with Rest and Rack. I'm happy to see you back. Uh, I know I haven't posted very much lately, but you know, life gets in the way sometimes. I hope all of you are staying safe. My thoughts and prayers go out to Texas. I know they're experiencing an extreme freeze over right now. I'm sorry if these videos may seem a little bit dry. I'm trying to get back in the water as soon as I can, but I'm waiting on my regulators to come in. Dang it, Tim, where is my package? In today's video, I want to talk to you about cases. Before we get started, I want to let you know that I am in no way sponsored by Pelican. I am not a Pelican dealer. I get no kickbacks off of this. So what you're hearing from me is my honest opinion on the matter. So in lieu of payment, be sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. That way you never miss a new video and you can continue to receive my unbiased opinions of equipment like this. I have here the Pelican Air 1615. This might just be the best tough box on the market today. It's everything I need. Lightweight, durable, travel sized, available in a variety of colors, and it's mainstream enough that I know that I can always order replacement parts in the event that something breaks. Now, I know that a lot of you are looking at the price tag of this thing and saying, Church, I don't need all that. I can just keep all my scuba gear in a nice soft bag, just like this one. It's half the price and it barely weighs anything. Hey, if you have one of these, good on you. These things, if you're in a pinch for time, are great for getting all of your gear and dunking it, or if you need to let it dry, you can let it hang outside. But there is something that this will not do for you. Ask yourself this question. How often is your gear in danger? It might be more often than you think. <laughs> I'm in danger. Tanks. You know, the 35 pound wrecking balls we have casually sitting right next to our gear. Tanks destroy anything and everything that they land on. That's the reason why it's good practice to always leave them lying down rather than standing straight up. So scenario for you. You're loading up all your gear into the truck or the trailer or whatever you're using to get to your dive site. And all of your tanks and all of your equipment are side by side. Tanks roll around, they shift during the movement. If a tank falls over and lands on your gear, is this going to protect it? Oh, but church, my regulator's tough. Hey, even the solid metal ones can't take a direct hit from a falling tank. With a tough box, you can rest assured knowing that all of your delicate scuba items, which is basically everything but the tanks, are completely protected. Moving to your diving destination by car or truck isn't the only type of transportation you have to worry about whenever it comes to moving scuba gear. How often do you want to fly to your diving destination? Do you really trust the airlines to not beat up your equipment? I know I don't. Shoot, when I'm flying United, I barely trust them to not beat me up. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! With all of your delicate items like your regulator and your dive computer, this is not going to keep it safe. If something happens to your gear while you're on vacation, you could be facing having to replace it outright or go out of your way to find a dealer that can fix or replace the items that were broken. Or worse yet, you may have to rent gear. I definitely would do everything possible to not rent gear at some of these dive destinations that you have to fly to. Tourists at these dive destinations have this really disgusting thing they do called feeding the fish, and it consists of them deliberately gagging themselves in order to... Church, what are you saying? I'm telling you, dear viewer, that these rental regulators have been barfed in more often than a red light district club floor. So let that disgusting visual incentivize you to not only purchase your own dive gear, but to also take as good a care of it as you possibly can. Do I have you sold on the tough box yet? Good. Now, let me show you why you should spend a little extra money and get a good one. 
So this is my Gorilla Tough Box. Gorilla is one of your run of the mill cheap tough boxes on the market. I bought this one back in Afghanistan in 2019 whenever I was demobilizing. Um, coming to the front, the first thing you'll notice is it has two standard latches, only two, none on the side. So if this box sandwiches in any at all, you're potentially looking at small items slipping out the side through the creases. So look at that, you can just get right in there. Um, no handle on the front. There's a spot for locking, but I mean, it's very thin. You can cover it through that. There's also, um, since the plastic is so thin on the top, there's very little rigidity in the lid itself. There's also no catch for the lid, so if you release it, it just falls right back, which takes up unnecessary room and also could cause damage to the really thin hinge that you have through here that's held together only by what looks like something big for a coat hanger wire, which is prone to just slipping out and then bending and then you can't get it back in there. Uh, so was the demise of one of the boxes. This is one of four that I bought. Um, one completely disintegrated on the way back. Uh, one was partially caved in on the side, so I had to throw it away. Uh, there's one that's still in use, and then there's this one. This one I use just for my winter gear storage because, I mean, it's basically all it's good for. Um, I mean, they're, they're really prone to breaking in just because, I mean, they're just so thin around the sides. I mean... This, I mean, all it's done has been get shipped from Afghanistan and it already lost a wheel. So they're just, they're really cheap guys. I wouldn't trust my diving equipment in this, especially on an airline. If a cylinder were to fall over onto this box, I mean, it would literally chop right through the center of this box and your dive gear would just be at the mercy of whatever this tank was doing. Now, coming over to the Pelican box, the Pelican box has five handles, one at each end. That way, in case there's any crinkling or bowing in the lid, you're not looking at losing any components out of the ends of the box. Uh, coming on down, this box has three handles going around the sides, like one on the front, one on each end here, and they have a several hundred pound weighted capacity. I mean, these are very beefy handles. And one thing I do like about the design of these is they're either in the out position and they also have an affirmative grip that way if it's traveling they stay locked in place and not sticking out becoming a snag hazard um, going to the inside there is a lid catch on here so that's as far back as the lid goes that way you have full exposure to the lid um, if you want to use the lid as storage as i've done you have that readily accessible there are metal reinforced locking points two on this box in case you want to keep your equipment secure while you know it's going to the airport or at a dive site the sidings uh, you'll notice here are sealed that way if you want to keep something dry on the inside of the box it will keep that seal the sides, while they are pretty thin, they're very, very sturdy. I don't know how Pelican has achieved this, but this box is has been kicked around, beat around. It's been on multiple flights. Uh, I have a weight on the inside of here just to keep it from falling back. Uh, wheels are still intact. I mean, I have had this thing weighted down with all of my weights and taking it down steps and the wheels, I mean, they're just as solid as they were with the day that I bought it. If you look closely here, you'll see this bolt in. There's four of those going around the lid and that's holding this aftermarket lid storage device. Um, that's another thing I love about Pelican is that they're so well known that there are many, many other third party manufacturers that are making stuff like this, which greatly enhance your ability to carry, you know, specific things that you don't want getting crushed down amongst the ordinary stuff you have in the main container. Also on the front here, uh, there's a data plate that you put your information into and you lock this in and it stays very firmly flush up against the box. You can either put it here or around on the front. 
I've obviously taken it off because I don't want to put my personal cell phone number out there for everyone to see. Another thing that I like about this box, which I believe all Pelican cases come with, is the fact that there is an extendable handle. That way you can roll this thing around like a briefcase or a suitcase. And you get all this top tier storage at an insanely low weight. I think this thing weighs less than 18 pounds. I love this box so much that I went ahead and bought Courtney one while I was at it, which I'm currently using for my dry suit stuff. And here's the other good thing about buying a Pelican case is you buy it one time and it will last you forever. All right, gentlemen, how long have you had your Pelican cases for? So this one's yours, right, Brian? I've had it running five issues. 94, 94, 95, yeah. Five issue. This one doesn't have the double throw latches and they didn't have the extra carrier back here for the handle. The handles were built into the box. And how long have you had your case? I got mine from a local dive shop that I used to work at in 1995 and I've had it ever since. 1995, so both of these are 25 years old or older. And the cool thing is they are lifetime warranty but I've never had to do any repairs to this one. It took a beating and kept on kicking. And they all, they both still have the wheels on them and everything. I mean, like these things, wheels, yeah. everything. That's solid. Now, once you have a tough box, make it yours. You know all those stickers that you've been keeping for years? Slap them on your tough box. Show the world where you've been and what you've done. Does your gear have a theme? Good. Customize your box. Make it look like yours. Make it something that you're proud of. Your gear is an investment, so make sure that you protect that investment. This has been Church with Rest and Wreck. Take care.